Nevada's cultural heritage is known worldwide and it's as varied as our bright neon cities and rugged wilderness landscapes. Every week, the Nevada Department of Cultural Affairs brings a piece of that heritage to your living rooms through our documentary series, Exploring Nevada. I'm producer and host Gwen Clancy. Welcome to the colorful world of cultural affairs. Much of what makes a place intriguing is its built environment. During the early 20th century, a nationally acclaimed architect spent some time in Nevada. Today, we'll take a look at the legacy he left here, through the eyes of architectural historian Mella Harmon and journalist Geralda Miller, who is studying African American history in northern Nevada. Our story begins on an early June morning on the banks of the Truckee River at the handsome structure known currently as the Lear Theater, but historically as the First Church of Christ Scientist. In 1999, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places. Would you define this as? Well, it could actually fall under several categories and be correct. Colonial revival, Greek revival, classical revival. I would call it neoclassical revival because it has that uh, two-story portico mm -hmm. uh, and those wonderful columns that are just so exquisite with the acanthic, acanthus leaves at the top. Corinthian column. Is this Corinthian column? column? Mm -hmm. Yes, Corinthian column. Because the Corinthian column has the floral right. stuff okay. at the top. And it can be other plants. This is a traditional one. Um, the ionic column is the one with the volutes, and those right. are the curlicues, and I love right. that word, oh, volute. Right. And I then like the that. doric is the one that's the just doric. plain. plain, okay. Paul Williams really enjoyed doing is using these sorts of, mm -hmm. of kind of lacy, almost delicate mm -hmm. features on his building. Mm -hmm. Oh, and look over there, oh, the mailbox. The mailbox. Oh, How great. I guess the church would be getting mail too. Looking across over at the Truckee and at the beautiful homes across from the Truckee River here, this beautiful, calm environment, you can imagine that even back in the 30s that this was a welcoming uh, church for its community. In the 1930s, there was a remarkable architect practicing his trade in Nevada. He had a penchant for ironwork and for Regency design and patios and romantic design. He was a black man in a town, Reno, Nevada, that was not welcoming to racial minorities. In this program, we're going to take a look at some of Paul Revere Williams' better-known works. But we're also going to have the rare opportunity to take a look at some of the lesser-known ones that are privately owned. Paul Williams died in 1980. Up to that point, little was known of his work. In 1993, his granddaughter, Karen Hudson, wrote a beautiful book focusing on all of his commissions that she knew of. She lists his commissions by decade including some wonderful photographs of, of his commissions. I particularly like this page of Paul Williams and his family in the 1930s, because most of the work he did in Nevada occurred in the 1930s. Paul Revere Williams was born in 1894 in Los Angeles, California, and was orphaned by age four. While going through school, he excelled in art and design. In order to present his ideas to his clients, he had to learn to draw upside down because it was untoward for a black man to stand next to a white client. But his designs were so endearing and so engaging to his clients that he quickly became known as the architect to the stars because Hollywood people wanted his designs. In 1931, one of the big breaks for Paul Williams was the design of a home for E.L. Cord in Beverly Hills. In 1933, remarkably, he shows up in Reno, Nevada, designing a home for a woman named Luella Garvey. Luella Garvey had come to Nevada in 1929 from Pasadena, California. It's unknown how she might have known Paul Williams, but it seems clear that she was the first to bring him here, although hard and fast evidence of that has not really been found. The old ranch house at Rancho San Rafael Park was also designed by Williams and may offer clues as to how this Southern California architect found his way to Northern Nevada. This house was built 
for a Los Angeles dentist named Raphael Herman and his brother Norman Herman. They actually ran a cattle ranch up here uh, that had originally been owned by the Pinkalini brothers. Paul Williams designed this beautiful house for them and we suspect since um, Dr. Herman was from Los Angeles that he knew of Paul Williams from that connection. Uh, the building has been modified over time so it's a little difficult at the present to discern what it looked like originally because no original photographs have been found. Paul Williams' earliest designs were Spanish colonial and he developed a, a penchant for patios and for including landscaping in his architectural designs. Another distinctive feature of Paul Williams' work is metalwork. He loved to use decorative metalwork. And here at Rancho San Rafael Park, I want to point out this gorgeous barbecue hood that would have been original to Paul Williams' design. This has this kind of French Regency flair to it that he really favored. And this is just a marvelous example of his romantic design work. And from this side, you can see the upstairs porch. We can imagine the Hermans and their guests sitting on this patio on a summer's morning, sipping coffee, looking out over this wonderful ranch land. And we're going to go right in here on the front porch into the front entrance of the house. Paul Williams also worked with classical architectural details, as we see here at the door surround on the entrance to the Rancho San Rafael Ranch House. So let's knock on the door and go inside. For a while, we weren't really sure when this home was built. It was sort of an enigma. We knew Paul Williams designed it, and we knew approximately when the Herman brothers owned it. But the precise date of the construction of the building was not known to us. Uh, the park staff very uh, generously presented for us to look at this uh, sign-in book, this guest book that was owned by the Hermans. And as you can see from the title of the cover, they called this property Rancho San Rafael. Inside this guest book are some wonderful notes from people who visited the Hermans uh, at the very beginning of the ranch. And you'll notice the date is 1936. And this is the earliest dates shown in this book. So we suspect, and based on this, that the buildings were built here in around 1936. Although this was a working ranch, the ranch house was actually quite formal in its design. Uh, notice here the beautiful formal fireplace with the surround here that actually copies those around the front door. And as you look through the room, there are other details, such as the wainscoting and the pediment over the door, which demonstrates Paul Revere Williams' uh, facility with that style. This is the way you get to the upstairs part of the house. But please note on the way the beautiful metal hand railing, which exhibits Paul Williams' interest in decorative ironwork. Particularly note the beautiful little leaf end here at the bottom. Uh, we believe that right over here was the master bedroom because it's at the front of the house, but you're going to see as we walk through the upstairs that there's an interesting way that these rooms interconnect. And we can see that all of the bedrooms are very interestingly interconnected. We know the Hermans came to Nevada in response to some uh, advantageous tax benefits in Nevada. They were wealthy people from Southern California. Now we're going to go look at a little property that housed the average person. In the heart of Reno's Old Southwest, we're standing in front of another one of Paul Revere Williams' works. This particular building behind me is one of 15 units of the former El Reno apartment complex that was originally located between Arroyo and Pueblo Streets off of South Virginia Street. 